Hi, this is David. Today we're going to talk about Azure Virtual Machines. Virtual Machines in Azure are very similar to the virtual machines you create on-premise. And a virtual machine is just a, a file that emulates a physical computer. So it has memory, it has disk space, it has applications and software and data all installed on it. You can treat it as if it were a physical machine, but it's just a file, so, which makes it really transportable. And because Azure Virtual Machines use hypervisor technology, or sometimes called Hyper-V, which is the same technology that you use to create virtual machines on premises, this makes these machines very portable. You can move them from the cloud to your local machine, to your local network, and from your local machine up to the cloud with relative ease. If you want to create a virtual machine in Azure, it's pretty simple to do so. You simply log into your portal and click this big green plus button right here. And if I select compute, then I get a list of possible virtual machines. I can get more of them by clicking on see all. And in fact, I can search for them here. And you'll notice that there are different operating systems. For example, there are different versions of Windows Server. There are different versions of Linux, such as Red Hat and Ubuntu. There are servers with uh, software pre-installed on them, like here's one with SQL Server installed already, and so on. I'm going to create, select Windows Server right here, and I'll take the uh, Windows Server, how about 2000, and I'll just take this first one, 2016 Data Center right here, and I will click Create to create this Windows Server. And that brings up this dialog. We call this a blade. And then here I, I give it the properties of the server. So the first thing I want to add is the name. I'll call it DG Test. Uh, win VM, the disk type, do I want a regular hard drive or a solid state drive? I'll need to log in with some administrator credentials, so I'll, I'll create that account. I'll give it the name DGIARD, that's my name, and the password will be, uh, uh, there's some rules about passwords. You notice that if I hover over this exclamation point, it tells me what those rules are, and this exclamation point will stay here until I, my password satisfies those rules. I'll have to pass it, to type it in twice just to make sure that I did it right. I'll tell it what subscription I want to use. Uh, most of you only have one subscription. And then I'll add it to a resource group. I can use an existing one or I'll create a new one, which I'll do here. I'll call this one uh, DG Test um, VMRG right there, which I've, I've already got one of those, so I'll call it VM2RG. I put it in a, in a region. I'll, East US is fine for me. You want to think about where you are and where your users are and where the any if they're gonna if this virtual machine is gonna interact with other resources in Azure or out on the web, you want to keep it close to those. Basically you want to think about latency. Uh, East US is fine for me. I'm in the United States right now. Uh, and then down here I can specify whether or not I already own a license of Windows. This one, this virtual machine will have Windows installed on it, and if I already have a license for it, I can use that license. If I don't have one, then they will rent me one, and the cost will just go up a little bit per hour. So I don't have one, so I'll say no right here. Click on OK. And then it gives me a list of machine sizes. The ones with the stars are the ones that are available in East US with the uh, parameters that I specified. And in here, it'll tell you, you know, the, the, just the SKU for that machine. Uh, but really, you want to know things like uh, uh, how many CPUs, how much RAM, uh, how many data disks, and so on. All that information is in here. And then, of course, the cost is important. This is the approximate cost per month. I think it's the, uh, if you were to run it 24 hours a day for 30 days, that's what you would pay. But you only pay for them while the machine is actually running. You can shut them down and save some money if your machine isn't required all the time. I click on select right here, and here I have some options like uh, most of these things I can just leave as the default, but if I wanted, for example, to add some high availability, I could have a, uh, some extra availability sets here. If I wanted to add a bunch of virtual machines to the same virtual network or the same subnet, I could specify that right here. I could add extensions, like maybe I want to add antivirus software there. If I want to auto shut down, that will also save me money. So maybe every day at 7 p.m. Central Time, I want to come in here and specify that. 
then I would, it would automatically shut down my machine so I wouldn't get charged for those compute hours uh, after 7 o'clock. Um, I, let's see, there's one thing in here. Oh, select inbound ports right here. This is important and it's required. Um, I want to be able to use an inbound port. Now, I, I could say at no inbound ports, but actually to use this, this is a this is a Windows machine, and the way I want to use it is I want to log into it remotely. And the software I use to log in remotely to a Windows machine is Remote Desktop. So I need to open up port 3389, which is the default port for Remote Desktop. So I'll check that, and I'll click on OK, and it warns me that, hey, you opened up a port. That's a potential problem uh, because it might expose you to the Internet. But I need that port. Um, and here it tells me the cost per hour. It's actually, uh, you only get charged by the minute, but running it for 60 minutes would charge you about 37.6 cents. Um, it tells me the uh, quick summary of what I selected, so if there are no surprises. And if I did anything wrong, if there was something inconsistent in my selections up here, it would tell me what that was and force me to go back and correct it uh, before I click Create. It also gave me this link here to show templates and parameters, and these are template files and scripts in PowerShell and CLI and .NET and other languages that will allow me to automate the creation of this same virtual machine. Now I don't want to do that but if I wanted to I could download it right here and use it later but I'll close this and I'll just click the create button. And Now you can see up here in the top right that it is actually deploying this thing. It's finding resources for me. It's building up this virtual machine based on the parameters that I specified and it's putting into this resource group. This will take a few minutes so I'm going to pause the video now and then I'll come back to it when we're done. Okay we're back. It was only about five minutes to create that virtual machine but you can see right here that the deployment succeeded and I can go to my resource right here. Close that. And here's my virtual machine, DG Test Win VM. And then here I've got all these different tabs, which if I click on the overview is showing right now. And uh, But if I want to do things like uh, set up uh, networking or add more disks, I can do so right here at security. I can, after the fact, add some extensions to this and so on. Uh, but the, the main thing I want to do with this, I want to connect to it and start using it. So the overview tells me information about it. It is running. It's in the East U.S. You can see that some of these things are, are I can change. Some of them I cannot. I can reset the machine. I can stop the machine. Or I can connect to the machine. Here's the public IP address that was assigned to it right here. And I can, these little icons right here allow to copy to my clipboard. But if I click on connect, this actually allows me to download an RDP file and open that. And if I open up a file with an RDP extension on Windows, then it will, it's associated with the uh, remote desktop application. It'll actually use that to connect to this machine. Now here I want to connect using the credentials that I set up. And those credentials were DGIARD and this password. I can tell it to remember me if I want to. It's warning me that this is a, a machine that I really don't know about. There's no certificate on it, but I just created it so I know that I can trust it. So I'm going to say yes to that. And here I am actually remotely connecting to this machine in an, Ada, in an Azure data center somewhere in the East U.S. It's the first time I've connected to it, so it's setting up some profiles and some other things. And uh, so the second time I won't get some of these messages. It'll connect a lot faster. But here I am on the machine. There's the IP address. I can come right here and start using it and start installing things and start uh, connecting to a, what configuring it the way I, I want to. In this video we've talked about Azure Virtual Machines and I've showed you how to create a Windows Server Azure Virtual Machine. Thank you for watching.